Welcome to our how to quilting tutorial. In this short tutorial we're going to be showing you how to quilt fabric so that you can use it on garments and products as areas of detailing or as a little bit of support in perhaps bags and accessories. Let's start by looking at the fabric and the materials that you're going to need to complete your quilting. Firstly, decide on the fabric that you wish to quilt. For this example, we're going to be working with a 100% cotton printed fabric. Now you're welcome to work with a large variety of fabrics. It's really up to you and what you're planning on creating with your quilting. An option is to work with cotton or a polycotton. You can also work with an upholstery fabric. We've worked with a wax cotton, suede, leather. There are numerous possibilities and it really depends on the look that you're after and the item or the garment that you're working with. As well as the exterior fabric, you'll also need to think about whether you're planning on using a batting or wadding with this to create the quilted shape, or whether you're actually just going to complete the quilting simply on the fabric as it is. If you wish to give the fabric a little bit of support, you're welcome to interface the fabric. You can also add a backing such as a little bit of calico or a lining fabric or itself. It really does depend on what you're planning to achieve with your quilting. Should you wish to include a batting or wadding, you're welcome to quilt the fabric solely with, a, with the batting or wadding on the back of the fabric, and then you would be adding your lining or whatever at a later stage, or you can sandwich the batting or wadding in between your lining. Again, it's really up to you and what you're planning on creating. Now you will need to think about the weight of the wadding that you wish to use and whether you're planning on working with a polyester or a cotton wadding. To show you a couple of examples, here is a lightweight cotton wadding and this will create a softer look. So really the heavier the batting or the wadding that you choose, the more structured the item will appear. You can see here this is a thicker polyester wadding. So you really do have to think about your fabric and the wadding or the batting that you wish to use and how you wish to actually sandwich them together based on what your final item will be. In terms of equipment that will be useful, obviously some scissors, a ruler for marking your quilting lines and a removable pen of some description. This pen comes off with water but chalk would also do. Some pins, and in terms of things that are actually specifically useful for quilting, I would recommend a walking foot. Now this will help, especially if you're working with a wadding, um, because it will help to bring the fabric through the sewing machine very neatly and create very neat stitches. If you don't have one, please don't worry, but it will help to perform better on your sewing machine. Two things that are useful, and I'll show you how we use them slightly later on in the tutorial, is a repositionable craft adhesive, or some safety pins. Both of these things are optional, but you may find that they're useful depending on what you're doing. Now, the first thing I would recommend that you do is test your fabric. We're going to start by actually marking our quilting lines onto the fabric, but I would then go about creating some test pieces so that you can decide on the weight of the batting or wadding that you wish to use and how you want to back your fabric. Start by cutting out a piece of fabric and this is the main fabric that you wish to quilt. Now, what I would recommend is that you cut out a square that is larger than your pattern size. I would not recommend that you cut out your patterns and then try and quilt them, because what can happen is that the fabric can shrink slightly during quilting, and you may find that the pattern pieces are actually smaller than they need to be. And obviously this can be problematic, especially if you're doing it for a garment. So, for example, if I were working with this heart shape as my pattern here, I would quilt this whole piece of fabric just to give myself a little bit of extra space and then I would cut it down to my template afterwards. So the first thing that we need to do is actually draw the quilting lines onto the fabric and we're going to draw them onto the right side of the fabric. Now I'm going to show you how I start drawing my quilting lines. You don't necessarily have to follow this step because you can really draw them in any direction that you want. However, this is what I tend to use. 
I tend to try and work with a 45 degree angle. So to get that, I actually line up the central points of the ruler for the inch, can you see those there? Onto the straight top line of my fabric. So I'm lining up all of these to then allow myself to draw along the edge of the ruler. And that's going to give me my first line. And I'm using a pen that comes off with water, but you can use a pen that comes off with air or that's got an eraser attached to it, or you can work with chalk. The one thing that I would recommend is that you test it on your fabric first, on a little scrap of fabric, and do the little quilting that you need to do and then see if it's easy for it to come off. Obviously you don't want to use something that you can't get off afterwards. The next step is to think about how large you actually want your quilts to be. Now again, this is completely optional and completely up to you and what you're working with with your project. Now I would generally recommend that you use smaller quilts on smaller items, larger quilts on larger items. But obviously the smaller quilts will provide more structure than the larger quilts will. So it depends on what you're making, the size of what you're making and how much structure you need. And that will obviously relate to the fabric that you're working with. Now in terms of the smallest size that we have done, we tend to work with a quarter of an inch or five millimetres. And probably the largest size that we use most of the time is one and a half inches, which is four centimetres. Now you could use larger, and I have used larger, working on very large projects such as a big tote bag or something, but it really does depend on what you're working with and what you're trying to achieve. So again, you can practice this in your test piece to decide what will work well for what you're doing. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to be working with one inch which is 2.5 centimetres. So, to create my next line, I'm simply going to position the line that I've drawn on my ruler on the inch mark. And these rulers, you can get these in metric or imperial, are fabulous for doing so. And we're going to draw the next line along. So you can see the line underneath is actually sitting on my inch line or my 2.5 centimetre line, and I can draw the next line along. Perfect. And I would do this all the way along my piece of fabric, working all the way back this way as well. I'm going to let you do it in this direction and then I'm going to show you how we do it in the opposite direction. So now all of the lines have been drawn in one direction. I'm going to show you how to draw the lines back in the opposite direction. Now, what I tend to do here is with this ruler again, is position it so that the lines on the ruler are parallel to the lines that we drew previously. Now this will give you a nice finish and a nice square shape to your quilts. So you can see now that my lines are off, they're not in line with the lines on the fabric. So I'm going to move the ruler until I get them all to match up like so. And that should give me another 45 degree angle going in the opposite direction. So I'm going to draw my first line and then I'm simply going to do exactly the same and use the ruler as my guide for drawing another inch or 2.5 centimetres. and I'm going to let you continue this going in the opposite direction. Once you've drawn all of the lines onto your fabric, you're then ready to start quilting and attach it to the batting or the wadding that you're working with, or the interfacing or the calico. It's here that I would recommend that you test things. Before you start your project, I would recommend getting a small square of this and really test it. Test the size of the quilts that you're working with, test the weight of the batting or wadding, and test whether you need that or whether you want to layer a layer of calico or interfacing behind your fabric instead. It really does depend on the project that you're working with. Now, once you've decided, you're going to position your wadding or batting against the wrong side of your fabric. If you had decided to add another layer of lining or something, you would position this underneath 
the wadding and have the wadding or the batting as a sandwich layer in the middle of the two pieces of fabric. Now, generally speaking, the majority of the time when we are quilting, I would say that we are doing it with this method. We've got our fabric and we've got our wadding or our batting. Or if we decided to work with an interfacing or calico, it would be in this position here against the wrong side of our fabric. We don't tend to have another layer of fabric at the bottom as a lining. There are times when this does happen, but the majority of the time I would say we don't. The reason being is that the lining we want to go in after we've created a garment so that it will hide all of the seam allowances and create a really nice neat finish to the project. But as I said, it really does depend up to what you're working with in your project. So you need to hold the layers together. I would recommend making sure that your batting or wadding is larger than your fabric by about half an inch, one centimetre at a minimum. And just make sure that when, you're, when you are sewing on the sewing machine, it doesn't sort of shrink up and disappear. You want to make sure that you've got wadding or batting right around the edge of your fabric. Now you can hold these layers together either simply by pins and I would just position some pins randomly around the layers or if you would rather you can work with safety pins and you would simply position those in and fasten them closed. Now they're probably great if you're working with a large area of this or you're doing a really big piece of fabric. I tend to use the pins most of the time because it's quick and easy and I'm going to be taking them out as I'm sewing and I'm not going to get any shift really because it's only a small area I'm working with. But if you are working with something large, the safety pins are fabulous. Another thing that's great if you're working with a large area is some craft adhesive and this is a repositionable craft adhesive. So how would you use this? To work with the craft adhesive, you would simply spray this onto the wrong side of your fabric. Now I would, would recommend laying down some layers of newspaper or some scrap fabric because you really don't want this to go over onto your table. You want to start by shaking it and spraying a nice layer onto the back of your fabric, making sure that you've got all of the corners and everything. And obviously read your individual can for instructions. You're then going to take your piece of fabric and we're going to position this onto the wadding, making sure that we position it in the middle so that we leave a gap and an area around the edge of the wadding for room, for the quilting to shrink if it so desires. Now the good thing about this adhesive is that it is repositionable, so if you need to lift it up and move it, you should be able to. So once you're happy with the solution that you have used, whether it be the craft adhesive, the safety pins or the pins, join me at the sewing machine and we can start sewing the quilting. So now we're at the sewing machine, we're going to start by sewing down each of the lines. I would recommend starting on one of the middle lines in your section of fabric and then sewing down the other lines on either side. And this will help hold your fabric onto the batting or wadding that you're working with and stop any shifting. I would also recommend that you sew them all in the same direction. So the lines going this way, we will start on this side of the fabric and sew down on all of the lines. Again, that will stop any shifting or movement of the underneath layers. Now we're going to be working with a walking foot and this will help with that. It will help pull the layers through the machine at the same time and create a really nice, neat and even stitch. We're going to be sewing a straight stitch and we will start by going forwards and backwards. And you want to keep this to a minimum, really two or three stitches maximum. And now we're going to stitch along the drawn line just feeding the drawn line into the middle of the foot. Now we're sewing this with a straight stitch using a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. And that will be fine for the majority of projects. If you're working with a thick fabric or a very thick wadding, then I would recommend that you increase your stitch length, just so that your stitches are visible on your fabric. And again, you can test this and see what you would like with your project. When we get to the end here, we are going to stitch 
forwards and backwards again, two or three stitches to seal off the stitching. Now I have sewn on all of the lines in one direction, and as I mentioned when we were at the machine, I started on one of my middle lines and I sewed in the same direction, moving out. So I would have sewn all of the lines moving out to each side, but in the same direction. So always starting at this end and sewing down. And that just really stops any shifting or movement. It isn't so problematic when you just have your batting or wadding attached to your fabric, but when you have a lining or an underside on the bottom of the wadding, you can find that it will shift and move, especially on a large piece of fabric. So another thing you must keep on top of here is trimming your threads. You really need to trim the threads after each line of stitching. Otherwise you may find that they get caught up in another row and that really just doesn't look very nice. Once you've completed the sewing in one direction, we're going to sew in the opposite direction. So we're going to be starting on one of the middle lines and sewing in this direction, sewing out to the side but in the same direction, and then sewing out to this side in the same direction. Now I'm going to be stitching again in the opposite direction to the first set of lines that I sewed. I'm starting on a middle line and I'm going to be going backwards and forwards as we did before, keeping my stitches to two or three forwards and backwards and then sewing along the drawn line, feeding the drawn line into the middle of my walking foot. And all I'm doing with my hands is just holding the layers of fabric. I'm not pushing nor pulling it through the machine, just guiding it nicely so that it can sew along that line. Now you will see that I've used a navy thread for this purely so that it shows up on the camera. You're welcome to use a thread that coordinates with your fabric or you can do something similar to this so that it will stand out and you can really view the quilting that you have done. As we near the end again we're going to go backwards and forwards again keeping our stitches to two or three to a minimum. I now would like you to trim your threads and then continue sewing the rest of these lines in the same direction. So starting at the top of the fabric and sewing down this way. Once you've sewn all of the drawn lines on your piece of fabric, you can trim off any remaining threads that you didn't trim as you were going and remove your pen. My pen came off the water, so that is now done. One thing to point out as you were sewing these lines is that if you had been working with the pins or with a safety pin, you would have needed to have removed them and not sewn over them. Now the final thing that we need to do is to trim off any excess wadding or any other layers of fabric to the same size as your front layer of fabric. And we're just going to do that with a pair of scissors. So you're simply going to be cutting off any of the extra fabric that is over the edge of your front fabric. And this will trim off any little bits of thread as well as you're going. So now that you have trimmed your excess wadding or fabric from the edge of your main fabric, you're good to go. And you can now work with this fabric as if it were a normal fabric. You would simply position your template or your pattern onto it, measure your grain line if that was required, and then cut it out and go from there. One thing to point out would be that you may want to consider where you positioned the quilting lines onto your pattern, and that would depend on the pattern that you were working with at the time. I would also point out that if you were planning on sewing with this on the machine and sewing this to something else, I would recommend that you stuck with the walking foot because you will find it easier to work with, if at all possible. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, I hope you've learnt something new and that you feel able to add quilting into some of the garments and projects that you're working with. Thanks for watching.